this week's Game Pro TV, WCW NWO Revenge goes head to head against WWF Warzone. Enter the world of medieval, and we're going to take you to a place where you get paid to play video games all day long. Welcome to another edition of Game Pro TV. I'm your host, Michael Komisar. We're here at Dave and Buster's to give you more reviews and previews of the hottest video games. So far this season, the game companies have released an onslaught of action adventure role playing games like Metal Gear Solid and Tomb Raider 3. Well, Sony has just added another of this pipe to the mix. Let's take a look at Medieval for the Sony PlayStation. There are a lot of action-oriented games set to hit the shelves this year for the Sony PlayStation, and many of them have spent a gazillion dollars on promotion. Good for them, but it'll be easy for great games to slip through the cracks unnoticed. Games, for example, like Medieval by Sony Computer Entertainment. In terms of genre classification, Medieval is your typical action-adventure puzzle game. But in terms of style and delivery, it's anything but typical. You play the role of Sir Daniel, who's returned from the grave to revenge his own death. He does this, of course, by killing a bunch of other people. The game is set in the medieval age, so the types of weapons at your disposal reflect the times. You start the game with a short sword that forces you to conduct your battles up close and personal. As you advance, your weapons will upgrade. The graphics in medieval are awesome. Every detail is intricate and has a flair of character. This game touts some of the most creative stage bosses you're going to find on the PlayStation this year. Every character in the game is a joy to watch, including Sir Daniel himself. Medieval also does a great job of visually recreating an ancient environment with great lighting effects and superb animation. The overall goal of Medieval is to get you into a creepy, ghoulish mood right from the start. One of the most successful elements Sony used to accomplish this goal was the music. The soundtrack in this game is a testament to how far video game music has come over the past few years. The Nightmare Before Christmas style is ideal for the game setting. Sony used the PlayStation's audio power to the fullest. In addition to the great music, the characters in this title don't just walk around aimlessly. They actually have things to say. Back from the battle, say so. It must think it is a hero by now. So go out and pick up Metal Gear Solid and Tomb Raider and all the other big games of the season. But give Medieval a try as well. The other games may end up collecting dust on your shelf, while Medieval is giving you goosebumps on your couch. Now wouldn't it be great to play Medieval all day long and get paid for it? Well, we're going to show you a place where people play video games for a living. It's time to take a look at one of the coolest places to work. Check it out. Welcome to a place where you can find any home video game system right at your desk. You have access to a library of almost every video game ever created. And if that's not enough, walk on down the hall to the arcade where you can play all day for free. And on top of it all, you get paid for playing video games. Sound too good to be true? Welcome to the headquarters of Game Pro Magazine. With over 500,000 subscribers and a reader base of over 2 million, Game Pro has evolved into the world's largest multi-platform gaming magazine. With each issue, Game Pro Magazine provides gamers with the most recent reviews, previews, tips, strategies, and up-to-the-minute news in the gaming industry. Well, Game Pro Magazine has been around for uh, nine years. In fact, January 1999, we're starting our 10th anniversary. When we first started, nobody knew how to review a, a video game, or nobody understood what a video game review was. So magazines like uh, Game Pro really define that. When you read Game Pro Magazine, you should get a good idea. Uh, as to how much, how to spend your money, what, the, what are the best games to buy, and then once you buy them, how to beat them. With an experienced editorial staff of some of the most avid gamers and writers you'll find anywhere, it's up to these editors to guide the consumers in the right direction. The trick is to keep, make sure that it's fun for you. If you're having fun, then the player's going to have fun, and you really have to put yourself in their shoes uh, and consider that you play, I mean, we get to play a lot of games here. And that's great and everything, but some other, some of our readers don't get to play every game that comes out on the market. They don't even get to rent, you know, as many games as they want. So they have to consider what have they probably got, what have we given the biggest ratings to, and, uh, and when it, at the end of the day, is it still fun? Is it still fun to still play this game over and over again, even after we've played it for three days? If it's still fun after we've torn it to shreds for three days of doing strategies and reviews and pro tips, then it's a good game. I look for a game that I can keep playing for more than just, uh, you know, what would be, if I were a, a home player, what would be a rental, you know, something that I can, that would play for more than a day or more than a weekend and still have fun with it long enough that I'd want to keep playing more and more. The four criteria that we use to, to rate games, fun factor, control, sound, and graphics are all very important. 
But of those four, I think the fun factor is the most important. And that's the one that we strive our hardest to be the most honest with because the fun factor is really an overall score. Um, what we look for are those four factors. We're looking for graphics, good graphics, good control, really great sound. But if it, a game has all that and it's not fun to play, then really, I mean, a, a low fun factor score is the death of a game. We're such jaded gamers here, you know, we, we take very few games home with us because we do so much work in the office, but the ones that we do take home with us are the ones that we really want to play. At times, they spend over 18 hours a day playing and reviewing dozens of video games. And if you think just because you're the best fighter on your block or can master the 100th level of any platform game, you're qualified to work at GamePro, think again. Good writing and good game playing skills pretty much go hand in hand. Um, try to have pretty much a balance of both. Too much of one or the other and you really need to have, like I said, the excellent gaming skills along with the good writing skills. You can always get better at games, but if you can't communicate what makes those games good, then you're not doing the reader any service at all. You really have to break it down specifically what makes a good game from a bad game and be able to identify those in a really short amount of time. We don't use a lot of words to get the base things across. But how does a reviewer stay objective when game companies are pouring out thousands of dollars in advertising into GamePro magazine? If the game's not that good, in our opinion, and we have to give it a bad review, you can bet that we'll get a phone call from that company who's made the game and have to uh, uh, substantiate our review as we should. So uh, we invite that, you know, we, we tell them if you have a good review, we'd love to talk to you about it. But understand that's our business and, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have our point of view. Don't go away. We'll continue our tour of GamePro Magazine and take a look at one of the all-time great fighting games, Capcom's Rival Schools. That's all coming up. Welcome back. One of the most popular arcade games made its debut on the home system last week. Let's see how Capcom's Rival Schools translates to the Sony PlayStation. Rival Schools, a game that's enjoyed a fair amount of success in the arcades, has been ported over to the PlayStation with a few extras. If you're familiar with Street Fighter Alpha's controls, you can handle Rival Schools pretty quickly. The graphics are smooth and vibrant, and the fighting mechanics are both easy to learn and at the same time deep enough to give fighting veterans replay value. The gameplay for the most part is 2D, but you have the ability to do things like sidestep your opponent, giving the game a slight 3D feel. One of the coolest features is the tag team mode, where you can call in your partner to help you take out your opponent. Every one of the fighters comes equipped with a special attack to fit their personality. Gamers can slip into rival schools' gameplay like a comfortable glove, and it won't take long before you're able to pull off cool moves like this one with perfection. Now that's a benefit for some, but could be considered a negative for others who are used to the learning curve being a little steeper. Another thing that Rival Schools gets right is the diversity of its fighters. The criticism of most fighting games is that the fighters are too similar to each other or similar to fighters from other titles. The guys over at Capcom did an excellent job of making sure that each one of these fighters has their own distinct look and style of fighting. Rival Schools is a welcome diversion in a year packed full of shooting games and action-adventure titles. If you're into fighters, this game is a must for your PlayStation library. Victory! Rival Schools, a must for all you fighting fans. And for all you sports nuts out there, NHL 99 by EA Sports is necessary for your collection. Last week we took a look at the PlayStation version. This week we'll give you our review of NHL 99 for the N64. A couple of weeks ago we showed you the making of NHL 99 by EA Sports. Now let's see the results of all that hard work. If you want to list the elements of this game's greatness, you've obviously got to start with the graphics. By far, this is the best-looking hockey game on the Nintendo 64. The animation is so realistic that you find yourself actually feeling sorry for players when they take big hits. You can tell how the motion capturing really paid off in the way the players skate, shoot, and check other players to the boards. But more than that has been rendered perfectly. So have the stadiums. Check out the reflection on the ice. NHL 99 is great but far from perfect. It's a game that you would rather sometimes see than hear. We commend Bill Clement for the energy he brought to the making of the game, but talk about being a complete waste of time. The play-by-play -play can be repetitive, and worse yet, irritating. The poor sound that a Nintendo 64 generates doesn't help matters much either. The hard checks and other in-game sounds just aren't as crisp as they are on the exact same title for the PlayStation. But in the grand scheme of things, these negatives aren't much of a factor at all because where this game really excels 
is in its fun factor. The gameplay is absolutely addictive. Not only can you play with your favorite team, but you also have access to international teams and the expansion Predators. Plus, if you want to add more punch to the game, you can even create your own player. There are a few other hockey titles available for the Nintendo 64 this year, but forget about them. If you want to own the best, you're looking at it right now. NHL 99 is the one to own. Now let's get a sneak peek at Knockout Kings. The Sony PlayStation has more than its share of fighting games, but believe it or not, there's room for at least one more. This system has been screaming for a realistic boxing simulation game. Knockout Kings hopes to satisfy that need with its release later this month. The standout feature in this game? The impressive roll call of fighters. Over 30 of boxing's greatest champions are at your disposal. Everyone from Rocky Marciano to Oscar De La Hoya, who along with Sugar Ray Leonard, helped design the game. The list of fighters allows you to have dream bouts like this one, between Muhammad Ali and Evander Holyfield. You can view the action from the typical ringside camera angle or get up close and personal with a first-person point of view. Plus, the pain of your fighter experience shows up with cuts and bruises on the face and body. The concept of the game itself is pretty cool, but the version we received here at GPTV needed a little work. First of all, the character animation was a bit too blocky and stiff. Plus, at times, it seemed way too easy to record a knockdown with shots to the body. If these problems can be corrected before the game's release, Knockout Kings could be a sleeper hit this holiday season. We'll have our review in the coming weeks. Stick with us. The college football season heats up with 989 Studios Game Breaker 99 and gets set to go head to head with WCW, NWO Revenge, and WWF Warzone. Welcome back. It's this time of year that the college football season really heats up, and 989 Studios is hoping you'll be taking your favorite team all the way to the national title. It's time to take a look at Game Breaker 99 for the Sony PlayStation. The first knock on Game Breaker 99 is, where the heck has it been for the past couple of months? NCAA 99 by EA Sports was released in early September, and most college football fans have already selected it as their game of choice. Game Breaker had to release with enough cool features to convince those buyers to disregard what they already owned and spend another 50 bucks on another college game. Is it worth it? Probably not. The graphic machine in Game Breaker is the same as the one used in Game Day 99, so the player animation is larger than life and very lifelike. But there's more to a great game than good looks. The same criticisms that existed for Game Day exist for this title. If you like your gridiron action, fast-paced but not incredibly realistic, this one's for you. The animation is hectic and in your face. Plus, there are a number of camera angles to choose from that really get you involved. But sometimes, just like with Game Day, the action can be a bit too unrealistic. A cool feature in Game Breaker, it's a carryover from all the games in the Game Breaker series, is the highlighting of the standout players for each team. The icons for your great players are a different color than those for your average players. To make it even easier on you, as you select your teams, your Game Breakers are listed on the menu screen. Now, of course, it would be easy to choose the team with the most Game Breakers, but come on now, what fun would that be? The sounding Game Breaker is a good news, bad news scenario. Good news. The quintessential voice of college football, Keith Jackson, calls the game. Welcome to Columbus, Ohio. The horseshoe always full as the faithful come to cheer for their Ohio State Buckeyes. The bad news is that at times he appears to have no idea what he's talking about. It's not uncommon to hear him call out the names of teams that aren't even on the field. Or Air Force. Or Iowa. Very on Keith Jackson like. On top of all that, you'd think that with the long delay in the release date of the game, they'd get the little details right. But 989 Studios fails in that department as well. For example, these Iowa Hawkeye uniforms were changed at least two years ago. Game Breaker 99 isn't a brutal title, but if you already own NCAA 99, why bother? If you're into more of a simulation style, NCAA 99's the game for you. But if you want a game that's got more of an arcade style, Game Breaker 99 will surely keep you busy for a while. Earlier in the show, we took you inside GamePro. Now let's continue our tour of the world's largest multi-platform gaming magazine. GamePro has some of the most creative and artistic covers of any magazine today. Here at GamePro, the most important thing we feel is the cover, because that's the first thing the readers see. That's the first thing that would grab your attention at the newsstand to say, hey, check out this issue. The most important thing for us is to choose a character and a game that's hot 
and that um, will appeal to the readers. If you see here, this past year's worth of covers, we've hit all the hot games of the year, Mortal Kombat 4, Resident Evil 2, Duke Nukem, Tekken, uh, WWF Warzone, NFL Blitz. The thing that makes GamePro covers different from all of our other competitors is the fact that we always use one singular image. And we want everybody to know that this is a video game magazine. We don't try to get too creative. We throw as much stuff on it. It's exciting. It's interesting, just like the video games. And for example here, here's a cover of uh, the GamePro's special one-shot, Fighter's Edge. And um, we take all the various images that we are given and uh, we basically assemble all the pieces on the computer. Putting the ma magazine together roughly takes about, let's say, uh, three weeks from beginning to end, but in reality, it's an ongoing process. Uh, the editors will actually start writing an issue, uh, let's say, four to five weeks before the actual issue hits production. We are constantly uh, planning at least two to three issues ahead. Coming up in our December issue, we're going to feature Tomb Raider 3. And this is a sneak peek for all you GamePro readers. We sketched up a concept here, showing Laura walking up to the sled, showing the tracks, showing exactly what we were hoping that the cover could be. And then the artist at IDOS took our notes and created this image here. So the actual image that you'll see on the newsstands will be similar to this, but somewhat different. But at least you got to see how it started. As the video game industry continues to grow at breakneck speed, Gamers can be sure that GamePro will remain on the cutting edge of the $15 billion industry. Last week, we gave you our review of WCW NWO Revenge by THQ for the N64. Well, let's see how this game stacks up against its arch rival, WWF Warzone by Acclaim, when both games go head to head. First off, if size truly matters, Revenge definitely has the edge. With over 60 wrestlers from the WCW and NWO to choose from, compared to only 16 from the WWF. But if you're looking for quality rather than quantity, you've got to give the graphics and the overall look of the game to Warzone. Just look at the detail put into the wrestlers. Stone Cold and The Undertaker are much more realistic than in Revenge, whose characters are more cartoon-like. Warzone simply looks better. Now in each game the control is fast and furious. You'll have no problem performing all the killer wrestling moves from the backbreaker to the atomic pile driver. But one cool thing in revenge, after you pummel your opponent, the wrestlers react like in real wrestling, bobbing around all dazed and confused. In both games, you have the choice of several fighting arenas. Wrestlers can battle it out for several titles, from tag team to the all-out battle royale where it's every man for himself. But for some reason, the all-out steel cage match was missing. This is one feature that totally sets WCW NWO apart from WWF Warzone. What's a wrestling game without a steel cage match? In both games, the sounds of bone-crunching hits fill the ring. But one thing Revenge lacks are the hilarious chants and heckles from the crowd. In Warzone, one of the best features is when you're annihilating your opponent and the crowd is urging you on. In Revenge, there's no ring announcer, jeers from the crowd, and very limited sound from the wrestlers. Warzone definitely scores in the sound category. Now, Revenge may have over 60 wrestlers to choose from, what if you want to create your own? Sorry. This is one option that definitely brings Warzone up a notch. One of the coolest features in Warzone is the ability to invent your own wrestler. Gamers can have a blast making a wrestler any size, shape, skin color, costume, etc. In Revenge, you can change costumes, but that's about it. In both games, weapons can be used in the ring, but Revenge offers a few more toys to smash your opponents with. In both games, you'll have a blast knocking your opponent all over the ring. WCW NWO Revenge may have more wrestlers to choose from, but WWF Warzone definitely has a much better look, sound, and fighting option. you got to give the title to WWF Warzone by acclaim. Don't go away. GamePro TV will be right back. Join us again here at Dunn.